Hey everyone, Scott here, discussing Diary of a Wimpy Kid, starring Zachary Gordon, Robert Capron, Rachel Harris, Steve Zahn, and Chloe Grace Moretz, directed by Thor or Tor Fred Dunfall. But for those of you that are wondering, where's Alien vs. Predator? And the Prometheus, or something. Well, Prometheus I'll get to later. I'm still going to do that show later tonight, on this evening. I don't know how when it'll come out, but it'll be out tonight. As well as the next day for Pirates of the Caribbean, le starting with The Curse of the Black Pearl, leading up to Dead Men Tell No Tales. But in that case, people asking, why, do he, why does he not do family films? So I thought I'd start this movie with coming out with The Long Haul coming the same weekend as Alien Covenant, surprisingly. Confessionably, I've never read the books, nor will I ever read them, because the story is awkward. So, let's get to the review, shall we? Greg's older mean brother named Roderick, who wakes Greg up from school. As it turns out, it was 2 o'clock in the morning, a.m., and he got ready for school one week too early, and he woke up his parents plus his baby brother, Manny. Roderick pretends to sound to be sound asleep and can't hear anything but a snoring, which, come on, is that's the oldest trick in the book. Really, Roderick? The character of Rowley is one of the two characters that I care more about because one of... And this is Rally, by the way, because of his innocence and his annoyance. For example, his talking belly button, which we only saw once in the movie, thank goodness. And when he and Greg dress up like each other and wearing the same clothes, is it's got to be the most humiliating thing about the movie, I feel like. Throughout the movie, I he does things that are really just awkward. When he says to a kid named Bryce, who we briefly see in this movie, says, nice butt, that's not awkward. Oh wait, yes it is, what am I saying? One more thing, when he says to Greg, do you want to come over and play? And it's not only awkward, but it's painful. He says throughout the movie, the strangest things ever. The other character I'm thinking is Angie, being played by none other than this actress. Who looks a lot younger in this movie, but that's okay. That was before Hit Girl. And who is so smart and is in the school paper and tries to keep away from other kids from school. I like the casting choice. She's young and hasn't been yet pep popularized and becomes the attractive young adult that she is. Also, I like her speech at the end when she tells Patty the bully in, at the end of the movie where... That junior high and high school is nothing, is, and the next thing she knows is life and how much people don't think of Patty as much anymore after high school and whenever we get to life. That's pretty much it. I don't really care for any of these other characters in this movie, including Greg, or even this bully Patty, who is super annoying in a bad way and as a spoiled brat, which, oh my god, that's not one of my favorite words to say at all. I regret saying it to this day. Greg's family is absolutely horrible to Greg as well as he blames them him all the time for things that he doesn't even do. That is a family film cliche. The stupidest thing throughout the movie is the cheese where it is just sitting there on school property and that dumb twist at the end where those people from Halloween night come to poor Rowley and make him eat the molded cheese and Greg saves his life from people avoiding him or touching him. Now, that is the dumbest tale I've ever heard in movie history and I don't like it. And I want it to go away, please. Roderick is a dumb character and his band loaded diaper is gotta be the worst name in a band in any band history. Even his Mo Motor Mama's magazine is offensive for a PG rated film as well as a little too much for kids. The scene where he explains this horrible legend of the devil's worship, that's, which is a forest in this movie, where Greg and Rowley go to anyways in the movie at one point. Greg is a very careless character. His visions in, of a diary paperwork, or excuse me, I meant his journal dreams, are pretty annoying. Like, 
he and Rowley sign up for the safety patrol and the teacher on that safety patrol system is quoting the original Spider-Man where the concept and the line is with great power comes great responsibilities now honestly leave the big movies like Spider-Man and Lord of the Rings alone family films come on you you gotta be that dumb really <sighs> he even leaves the poor kindergartners in the hall where Mrs. Irvine finds him and thinks it's Rowley and it's raining and and then gets Rowley going for the team of really getting removed from the safety patrol, which really that was Greg's fault, is a painfully stupid scene. And then I'm kind of glad Greg got out of the safety patrol by the end of the film and, and Raleigh became the promotional captain. His Wizard of Oz scene where he throws the apple at Patty because she threatens to beat up Greg like she did a couple of times before. He couldn't before because he couldn't really sing because idiot Roderick him films him with a camera when he is pretending to be a tree. He also doesn't get back Rowley his video game, which Patty... And then they almost fight because Patty has the biggest freaking mouth ever. I'll, I'll just I'll only say that. He, she has a very big mouth. And I brought up how spoiled and annoying she is. And she's just... In, ugh, I can't stand her. I'm so glad that she touches the cheese to touch Rowley by hugging him. When she deserves to be gross forever, based on what she treats Greg and Rowley in the first place. She beats up Greg in a wrestling match? Now that's stinking painful. Please get me away from this movie. Just like Fregley, who also beat him up at a wrestling match, is annoying but gross as he puts his booger on Greg, which, ew. I like the film's message, though. Do something and take the blame for yourself instead of your friend for example, and you stick together as friends. Now, for my reading of this movie, now, because I didn't like most things about this movie, doesn't mean I disliked the film. I liked a few things in it. I'll give it a 5.7 out of 10. It's an okay movie. It's harmless for kids, except for Roderick's inappropriate magazine, but it's not for me, personally. It's not really the best film ever made, not by a long shot. But it's fine for what it is, so be sure to stick around for later tonight when I review Alien vs. Predator for the Alien series and tomorrow, for tonight and tomorrow, I'm going to review Pirates of the Caribbean, The Curse of the Black Pearl. Until next time, it's not a diary, it's a journal.